So, Roger, what was the vampire like to fly? How did it handle? Uh, it had no power controls, so it was um, reasonably heavy on the controls. Um, it didn't have a lot of power. If you took it up quite high and you put it into a dive, it would actually go out of control wow. at about 0.78 times. This, that's 0.78 of the speed of sound, Mark number 0.78. That was its limiting Mark number. And when we flew this, I had an instructor who was a, uh, a fairly aggressive sort of chap. And he said to me one day, I want you to go up to 35,000 feet, put it into a dive and just keep diving at full throttle and see what happens. See, and I said, oh. always did what you were told, mm -hmm. certainly in those days. And um, so I did that. And at about 0.8 of the speed of sound, this thing just went completely out of control. I mean, the nose pitched down, and nothing I could do to change it. Nose pitched down, started rolling like that, and it was shaking and Christ. buffeting and all that. So I pulled the throttle back, put the speed brakes out, and nothing, still couldn't do anything. But as you come down from the high level into the thicker air, the mark number reduces, decreases, right. yeah. and the airspeed indicator gets faster. That's, mm. that's how it works. But when you reach the mark number where it comes, the, the, the waves, mech waves, are not disturbing the controls, then you get control back. And so at about 15,000 feet, I suppose, I was able to control it and bring it back. And that was, you know, my first experience of flying an aeroplane at high mark numbers. I liked the Vampire, it really was nice. It was very, uh, at, at lower speeds, it was, it was very easy to fly. It landed quite slowly at about 85 knots. Um, and um, the two-seater was okay. Um, yeah, nice aeroplane, nice. So how many hours did you get on Vampire before you moved on to Hunter? 110 was the course uh, number that was up. Uh, of that, I suppose about half of it would be dual with an instructor and the other half would be solo. 